So I did a long run recently and was looking over the data that my Garmin 4Runner 245 watch gives me. And there's an interesting statistic it provides called estimated sweat loss. And for my roughly two and a half hour run, my Garmin estimated my sweat loss at 895 milliliters. That seems like a lot, but I don't know whether it is or it isn't, but it did bring to mind two questions. One is, why should I care? Why should you care about sweat loss rate? And two, <laughs> is this thing even accurate? Now the answer to the first question is pretty straightforward. We care about sweat rate to, so we understand how much hydration should we, we should be taking in when we're doing a run. If we end up sweating more than we drink, than we take in, we run the risk of getting dehydrated. So whether you drink on a schedule or you drink to thirst, you kind of want to keep track of how much liquids am I taking in and how does that compare to my sweat rate. Keeping well hydrated will keep you running longer and stronger. Hey, this is the Ages Runner and I'm Ralph. I love to run, I love learning about running, and I especially love sharing what I learned about running. If you feel the same way, please consider subscribing. Now the answer to the second question is a little more involved because I can't answer that off the top of my head without some data. And the way we get data is we run our own sweat rate test. In other words, I will do a sweat rate test, compare my results to my garment. Now if you've never done a sweat rate test, it's really straightforward, it's very simple. Basically, you determine how much weight you lose during your run, and then you add to that any water you drink, and the amount of that total in milliliters is your sweat rate or it's the amount you sweat and you divide it by time to get the rate but that's how we would determine sweat rate so i'm doing that today i'm going to take you through the process uh, step at a time uh, so you get the idea of what we're doing here it's pretty straightforward but there are a couple little nuances we want to make sure we cover so we have kind of accurate readings when we, when we make measurements of weight and do the math and so forth now before we get into the steps one thing i want to remind you is that a sweat rate test it's really valid under the conditions in which you, you do the test. For example, today it's, it's cool, low 60 degree Fahrenheit, maybe 16 degrees cel uh, centigrade Celsius. Uh, it's windy, sunny. If I were to do this another time where it's much hotter, say it's uh, upper 80 degree Fahrenheit, you know, approaching 30 degrees uh, Celsius, uh, and other conditions are very humid, I'll get a different sweat rate. So keep that in mind, which means you might want to do more than one uh, sweat rate. You might want to do one under cool conditions, one under hot conditions, just to give you an idea of how your sweat rate varies. So one of the key things we need to measure both before our run and after our run is our body weight. And to be consistent, I think to be the most accurate, I'd ask that you do it naked. Let's take the variability of clothes out of the equation. Do it naked. The other thing I'd like you to do before your run is empty your bladder. Because I want you to hold your urine and not urinate until after you do your post-run weigh-in. If you urinate, that's going to throw the calculations off. Either you'd want to collect your urine, I know nobody wants to do that, or you'd want to subtract out the amount you think you urinated, and that's just an assumption, and we don't want to introduce assumptions. So weigh yourself in your birthday suit, empty your bladder, and write that number down. For me, that was 193 pounds. Now, if you're going to take water with you, we need to determine how much you start out with. Two ways you can do it. One is by weight. If you have a small kitchen scale, measures weight in either ounces or grams, Put the water in your water bottle, put the total bottle and water on your scale and write that number down. That's a total of the weight of your bottle with water you're starting out with. If you don't have a scale, then you can do it by volume. The nice thing about water is you know one milliliter weighs one gram. So take a measured amount, whether you measure it in ounces or milliliters, doesn't matter. We'll eventually convert it to milliliters. But pour a measured amount in your bottle and write the amount that you poured in your bottle down so you know the pre-run water amount. So step three, the next step is go do your run. Have fun. Start your Garmin. If you're going to do like me, start your Garmin and do your run, whatever you're going to do. And again, hold your urine. Do not urinate until you weigh yourself after your run. So after you do your run and get back home, it's time to do our post-run measurements. So take all your clothes off. Again, your clothes have sweat on them. Get all of them off your body. Take a towel and completely wipe the sweat off your body, your head, your back, your tummy, the back of your knees, wherever you have sweat, wipe it all off. Then get on a scale and measure yourself. For me, I weighed 192.2 pounds. In other words, I lost 0 0.8 pounds in my run. And then take your water bottle and if you weighed it, go measure the final weight. The difference between the pre-run weight and the post-run weight is the amount of water you drink. That'll be in grams and grams and milliliters are the same. In my case, my water bottle weighed 220 grams less. It means I drank 220 milliliters. Now, if you did it by volume, pour out your water into a measuring device, measure the amount left, subtract the two, uh, you know, the beginning uh, volume and the and ending volume, convert to milliliters, and you're good to go. So let's roll all this up. Now we need to do a little bit of math. Again, and I'm going to work in grams because we know water in grams and everything in grams. Just, you know, grams and milliliters works very well. So everything's going to be in grams. My starting weight, let me get my reading glasses on here. My starting weight was 87,543 grams. That's at 192 pounds. 
but I know I drank 222 grams of water. So I'm going to add that to my, to my weight because I know I added that weight to my body. And my ending uh, weight was 87,180 grams. That's the 192.2 pounds I weighed after my run. So I add my, so I take my starting weight, add the water, subtract out my ending weight, and that gives me a difference of 583 grams. So I know that during that roughly 44, 45 minute run, I sweat 583 grams. Now we're going to make the assumption that sweat is the same density, very similar to water, and that one milliliter of sweat is one gram. So if I sweat 583 grams, that means I lost 583 milliliters of sweat during that run. Now you can also convert that to a rate. In other words, I take that 583 milliliters divided by the time that I was running, and it was, I said it was a little less than 45 minutes, and that gave me a sweat rate of 853 milliliters per hour. So if I was going to continue running at that level under those conditions, I'd want to consume roughly that amount of water in an hour. So how's that compared to my Garmin? Well, this, this is the big shocker for me. My Garmin said, and I'm showing you the data right now, that my estimated sweat loss was 247 milliliters. And again, I had 583. It's like, holy cow, is that, that is a huge difference. I said I, I sweat over two, almost 2.3, 2.4 times the amount of sweat than my Garmin did. Now again, Garmin, they, they don't tell you how they calculate sweat loss. They just say they take data that's available on the watch, ambient temperature, uh, elevation, pace, heart rate, effort, things like that, and calculate it. And this was a real surprise to me. It wasn't even close. So now my long run sweat loss of 895 milliliters is very suspect to me. I bet I sweat a lot more. I don't know if it was two and a half times, but I bet I sweat a lot more. So, so my message, at least on one test, is that my Garmin sweat rate is wrong. <laughs> it's not even close. Now, this probably begs the question, maybe doing more testing. Uh, again, I dressed a little warmer for this. I wore long sleeves and leggings because I didn't want a sunscreen. Maybe that influenced the Garmin rate. So I'm going to do more testing throughout the summer. Maybe we'll come back late in the summer and give an update. So in this video, I wanted to do three things. One is talk about SMA sweat loss and why it's important we did that. Do a sweat rate test, and I did that. I know what my sweat rate was under those conditions. Again, if the different conditions will give you different sweat rate. And third thing was compared to Garmin. That was the big surprise that this Garmin wasn't even close to estimating the sweat rate. So if you have a Garmin watch or Coros, maybe it does sweat rate also. Be very cautious in using that as a number. Do your own sweat rate test. You can see it's very easy. Just a couple of weights and weigh yourself and you can actually build a library of, hey, if it's if it's really hot, really humid, this is one sweat rate, but in the winter time it's a different sweat rate. You can have all those. Again, give you an idea of how much water you should be consuming. And we've talked about consuming water for thirst if you're under 60, and that works, but you kind of want to keep in the back of your mind, am I still drinking enough? Am I still getting enough water in my system? And certainly if you're over 60, as we've talked about, uh, you need to drink on a schedule. And you could use your sweat rate test to decide how much should I be drinking every 15 to 20 minutes. Hey, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please scroll down and hit the like icon. And if you're new here, I'd love to have you stick around. Please subscribe also. Thank you, and happy running.